Look who it is. It's Paper Hi. Guy. Paper Guy. And he's got a friend, and this is Tom, Tom all the way from Upstate New York, Rochester, New York. Million Dollar Peddler. Half of them. Chuck's not here, unfortunately, uh, though. Couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. Chuck just didn't have any love for us here in Ohio, I uh, guess, right? Uh, big fan against Ohio. Big fan against Ohio, huh? <laughs> Now here's some ammo, some shells. Now these are World War II or later. Trench art, things along that line also. Some packs, canvas material. Love some of the old toys too, but lots of the prices on them from just what I can see is way more than it would be worth buying, especially with some of the lures and things like that that you'll run into. A nice World War I belt, uh, army belt there, but it has many issues. It's not worth the price I saw on it. Love the old keys as well. I always try and look through the totes when I'm seeing things on there. Table-wise, Barbies we've done extremely well with. Now, coming up here is a good example of just some of the oddball mixed stuff that I really love finding. This table here is a great example of how I find small buttons, pins, and things like that. There's some really nice religious medals in here. All the prices were a dollar or two for everything on this table pretty much. So if you want to find some decent stuff and you don't know what to do or where to look, spend some time at a table like this. Pretty much every flea market I go to has a table or a couple people that sell just like this. It's the diamond in the rough. It's the things that you know that they may not know is worth some money. And that's usually where I make a lot of our money. The boxes, the bins, the stuff just thrown out on tables is honestly the best. It's not sorted through as much. It's random stuff. Mostly the folks that have these types of things out just don't know much about it. Now this gentleman here had tables and tables full of just oddball things. There could be treasures out here galore. I did find some things for the price. I believe it's $2 if you buy 10 items. If you buy more than that, he was going to go even lower. So lots of different oddball things. Even some of the wheels and things you see from some of the old machinery and equipment. These could have went on like uh, dressers and chairs and things like that. Believe it or not, those sell also. Again, just tables of just the same price stuff. And he sold a ton of this. I did talk to this gentleman for a little while. By the time I made it here and it had only been open for an hour or two, he had been picked through very extensively from the what he was talking. One of the tables was loaded up with just tokens. Old tokens and coins and all different types of things. And people, I'm sure, from the way he was talking, probably bought about half of the items he had on that table. It was just loaded. There were some decent treasures to be found throughout here, but this is one of those things where you're going to have to know a little bit. I found some really nice silverware, which in another segment or video I'm going to show you as well. We're going to show you how to clean that stuff up without damaging it as well. Lots of stuff on this table. You'd be surprised at what some of the stuff can go for on here. Most of the silverware was a decent brand. There was some really nice pieces. Some of these old lids from the, the mason canning jars can even sell, the zinc ones, if they're in good condition. These are all sorts of things that I look for all the time. He had some buttons, some pins mixed in here, some buckles, which turned out to be fairly good also. So it's just one of those places that if you dig around, you can really score out on these sorts of things. It just looks like junk to everybody. And I think that's the biggest takeaway on places in setups like this. These are the type of tables I always go to. I will cling to places like this because it's those small, tiny pickups, those small, tiny pieces of collectibles that really make us a small fortune in it. Little pieces of jewelry mixed in there. You can find gold, you can find silver, you can find all sorts of different oddball things at these sorts. And here's again, here's a whole nother segment. If you're into tools, this is a good place sometimes to find tools that may need to be cleaned up and things like that. I don't mind if something's rusty. As long as I'm able to fix it and clean it up, I'll do just fine and I'll be happy with what I found as well. So excellent assortment of stuff. He had some bottles. There was a lot of things here. I think he had like eight tables like this and off we went. Now that Coke sign was an original one and what it had was the actual frame. Very early. Now he was asking around $800 for that which 
probably was worth it to a collector, but as a reseller, it was not, to me at least. I'd have to ship it with the higher shipping costs and a bunch of other things. It had some issues with it. I loved the piece, though. Excellent, primo find, something you just won't find at any other place other than places like this. Now, here's an example of a similar one, which you can see here. Sold for $500 without the frame. This one's very nice. It doesn't have some of the issues. This one may have been trimmed on the right side, as you can see, or it could have been a two-part sign, maybe for a bus or a public display of some sort. Usually it completes the frame and they wouldn't cut off the word Coke. So it's still sold for that. It's a large one. It's a decent one. The condition of what's there is just spectacular in all honesty. Now here's one from the same time frame or same era as the one we saw. And this one went for 430. It has some issues with it, some nasty creases and things. That one we saw at the flea market though had some issues as well. The only difference though is that one had the original frame. Uh, again, you might have been able to make 100, 150 bucks or something if you bought something with that much money into it. But again, it, it's more of a collector price for something like that than a reseller price. Great item, probably a good price, as I said, for collector, but not for me. Okay, so we got Paper Goy here. Dave's here. Dave's got all of his little treasures in his car. Some really nice stuff, actually. He got some really good stuff here. Vintage paper, if you know Dave, right, Dave? Uh, all that I bought today was vintage paper. That was it. He scored out on He beat me to all the good paper today. You know, menus, you get a little bit of everything in here, uh, paint stuff. Why don't you show them real quick, Don, right back over there, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Paid $40 for that entire uh, milk crate full of it. And the milk crate's worth a dollar by itself, so it's doing really well. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of stuff for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure you will do well. What's that, Elf Quest you said on the top? Yeah, there's an Elf Quest box game and all that's that kind of stuff. Probably worth that on its own. You know, and, and like something rather like this, um, we always do in our uh, Bolo videos showing things like this when they sell because people from the local area are going to want it. And as I was telling Mr. Magazine, um, you get something or other like this, people move into the county, and this might have been very common back in 1961, 1981, 2001, but other people move in, they're they gone. They have them, and now they want it. So they go and they buy it, and you can get. 40, 50 bucks. Out of I buy of every one of those time. I see too. Any Centennial ones too. Centennial coins, Centennial postcards, brochures, booklets. Yeah, anything like that. And uh, I'm going to give a, a little bolo right here. I'm going to give away a secret. This magazine, believe it or not, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it's a 50 to $75 magazine. Now why is that, Paper Goy? <laughs> Come on, Dave, let's give it away. Uh, it's just because um, the West Point scandal, and a lot of people would go and buy this because of the... Um, the trouble with the, uh, the Naval Academy and all that kind of thing. So you will see this one out there. This was a dollar in a pile of stuff. They probably had 20 or 30 Time magazines, maybe 40 Time magazines. I pulled this one out, and I pulled that one out, and I'm sure, Oxford Professor, you probably know why I pulled that one out. Uh, China, of course. The China yeah. one, yep. So, and that's what you can do when you're out there. Um, I didn't feel like carrying around all of the stuff that I wanted, so I said I would cherry pick the best two of them out of there for a buck a piece. I'm sure I probably could have gotten the entire pile fairly cheap had I wanted to. It wouldn't have been hot, worth it. It's a hot, wet day, and oh, I've got yeah, yeah, plenty yeah. of other stuff to carry as well. And you, believe it or not, you do have to take that into account. I didn't want to walk back park. to the car, so trust me. That's yeah, it, it was so muddy. To, yeah. So yeah, hopefully oh, some Air, uh, Air Force stuff there. Yeah. Well, I don't want to show off all your treasures, so you'll it's have your okay. own video. No, I'm going to do it do my own way, don't worry. Do we have a little more talk, real story. These are always fun, and actually, when you do find these, they do sell. These are very difficult to list. Can I list the, the actress on the cover usually? Yep. And the problem is some of them don't even identify who the actress is. And then you have things in there like, you know, my husband left me for, and then you're like, okay, what, what keywords am I possibly going to find? So sometimes things like this are very, very difficult to list because there really isn't any good keyword. So you just put it up and you, you hope that somebody is collecting the series. So something like this is a very, very long tail item. That might be a little bit to do with what might help sell it though. Yep, the Kinsey's, yep. Yeah, that yep. whole, yeah, that's probably exactly what I would say. Yep. So hopefully that helps you a little bit over there and definitely, if you don't mind me plugging my channel for a moment. Be uh, my guest, Dave. Check out the Million Dollar Peddlers. Uh, over on YouTube, we do a bolo video every uh, Saturday. We have a Tuesday and Thursday show. And then Wednesday we have a live show 7.30 Eastern. So check us out over there. Will do, Dave. We won't give away all your secrets, though. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of them.
a girl's married just by looking at her? Sure. Her hands give her away. After a lot of housework, her hands don't look so feminine, especially around the knuckles. Well, I like that. Come here, look at this. What? Oh, her ear. <laughs> What's wrong with these knuckles? Hey, you must be different. These are much too smooth to be married hands. Very pretty, feminine hands. You know, I think that's because I do dishes with new, clear joy. Look at this. I can see right through it. So you can see how mild it is. Well, you mean clearness means mildness? Well, it certainly seems to with joy. Still think you can tell by her hands if a girl's married? Sure you can. I mean, if she's wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> On the hand, the joy keeps so feminine looking. 